So as you're working into your poster design, yours is obviously a very different design than what you see in front of you. Um, but what I want you to definitely think about is the program that you're going to be using. This is obviously Photoshop. Um, you also have the option of using Illustrator or a combination of both of them. Now, if you're working on something, let's say you wanted the precision of Illustrator to build something that you're then going to go ahead and place into your Photoshop document, I want to show you really quick about placing a document. So what you do is you go up to File, and you hit the Place button. And when you get into there, let me go ahead and find one, which would be, uh, uh, here we go. So let's go to Graphic Design, actually. So you find your Illustrator document, and your Illustrator document would then allow you to say Place. So right here I've got my Place document. This little box is going to come up. It'll say Place PDF, blah, blah, blah. Don't change anything. Just say OK. So my image is put in there. You can see I see a box, but it looks empty. I have to pay attention to where it was placed. Right now it's placed under that colored layer at the background. So I need to press the Enter key. That'll commit to it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull that up so you can actually see it a little bit more. You can see it right over inside of there. I'm going to actually put this right up to the top. OK. I'm going to undo that because that went and disappeared. Okay, so what I want you to be aware of is working on these kinds of pieces. So, for example, if I wanted to come in here, I could use my magic wand. Let's say I wanted to get rid of that black heart. I'm going to press the delete key, and then I'm going to check out what happens. Obviously, it didn't work, but what I do is I go ahead and I say, oh, let me read this. Couldn't complete the request because the smart object is not directly editable. When you place a document, it will come in as a smart object. So no matter how many layers were on your original document, etc., it's going to come in as a smart object. It'll be all flattened onto one layer. So if you don't need it flattened, you don't want to do it in this method. But in this case, I'm going to read this and say, oh, that's right. I need to rasterize. I need to make it editable. So I'm going to go through right over to the blue, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say rasterize layer. That's what will make that layer now editable. I can change it just like any other layer. You will also see this shape right here that also is an indicator that it's a smart object. But once I do this, you're going to see it has now disappeared. When I come in here, let's grab that magic wand. I select that heart. I go ahead and press the delete key. And it's now empty. So like if I move that layer, no matter where I move it, uh, you can see that that's an empty bit right over there. Okay, so that's a really important part of placing objects into here or placing files into your finished work so that you can have a nice, um, a, a nicely composed finished work as well as rasterizing. Okay, so that's done. Now, you can also see right here, there are different file folders in here. And some of you are really good at making groups. Some of you I want to encourage to make groups while you're working in Photoshop. It's incredibly important because you will have a lot of different layers in here. And I don't want to see layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five, layer six, layer seven. I want to see renaming and I want to see groups. So right here, moons, you can see when I click this, the moons, let me turn this one off. The moons come on and off. So there are the moons, there they were, there they are. If I open this group by pressing this little arrow, you're going to see I've got the right moon, the middle moon, and the left moon. So that can turn all three off at one time. Or if you open it, you can then obviously just turn individual layers off. But this is really helpful when I want to get rid of something so I can work, and then I can try it back on. Oh, there's the finished work. Um, this is a student example work, by the way. Okay. So making a group is as simple as going to the bottom of your layer menu, there's a little, looks like a little file folder. If you hover over the top, it says create a new group. I'm going to create a new group. It's called group two, and I'm going to call that one boom box. I know it makes no sense with this um, particular composition, but I'm going to grab the layer that has the boom box on it. I'm going to drag that one into that particular group. So I can control that group. I can also press this arrow to collapse the group so I don't have um, a list of layers that are 75, um, 75 feet long. Okay? So that's that. I want to go ahead and kind of pay attention to that because that'll be really helpful for my workflow. Rename, 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 regroup.
make groups, rename, do all those great things, okay? So with that, let's say I have a finished composition, um, and I really want to sort of tighten it up. I showed the example yesterday, talked with a student in here who had a really, he had a good piece. It was fine. According to him, it was fine. And I like that because, yes, did it meet the requirements? Yes. But did it make him happy? No. And so I gave a couple of options. So it's pretty cool. I'm going to go up to the top and just, cl just click on whatever's on the very top because when I add something on, it'll kind of push it in that area. If I'm down here and I paste something in, it'll put it between those two, then I have to move it. So if I go over to, let's say I go over to Google, you can kind of type in, um, it could be like a vintage background or um, yesterday I typed in grunge, G-R-U-N-G-E. Here's my vintage background. And then I'm going to go ahead into my tools and size large only. So I found some, some larger sized pieces. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of scroll through. I'm going to pick something that I like. Now watch out for some of them that have pre-existing designs. I want the design work to be yours. If you're just grabbing some visual texture like this, I'm okay with it. But things like the flowers and the scroll work, I personally feel for the utmost of your grade and your artistic, obviously much more for your artistic skill. I want to see more of that. But let's pretend, um, oh, that's pretty cool. All right, let's pretend this is the one. So I'm going to go ahead, let's take a look at it. I'm going to view the image. And there it is right there. It's got some like watermarks and some older edges. I'm going to just copy it. I'm going to come right over to my Photoshop document and I'm going to place it. In this case, again, Control T or Edit, Free Transform. I'm going to go ahead and turn that. Actually, I'm going to just type up here 90 to make sure I get it on the... Now, on this one, I also don't have to um, I don't have to hold the shift key down to maintain proportion because there's nothing that has to be proportionate. Press the Enter key, and then I'm going to drag this outside the group of moons. I'm going to put this over, put this over the top of that particular group, so it's over everything. If I come over here to my layer styles, I'm going to click on the first one, Dissolve. Dissolve looks like it did nothing, but this is all now highlighted in blue, and I can just sit here and press my arrow while I'm looking at the screen, determining what I like, taking a look at the effect. Like, this one's pretty cool. Like, it gives a really nice vintage look over the top that without it, it might have felt too new or a little bit too sterile, okay? So I'm going back on that one was dark, and I might have a sheet of paper next to me and write that one down, that that's a good one. And I go to multiply. Oh, my God, I like multiply even better. But let's say multiply like a lot, but I don't want it as dark. You could also combine that with the idea of changing out your opacity. Let's say I reduce the opacity. I make it a little bit more see-through. Let's say that's more what I like. So again, I just go through. That was multiply. I'm going to go ahead and continue to push this down. I like that one too, linear burn. Some of them will be epic fail. Like this just is not going to happen. You lose all of your work. So again, you continue on your way. Sometimes this may inspire you, like right here, this may inspire you to brighten up some areas of your work um, or change out a color scheme somewhere, etc. So let's say I settle on this one. It happens to be soft light, but I don't want the text. No, I'm not going to go on soft light. I want it to be more prominent in the moons. Sorry. There we go. Let's say I don't want the moons to have that much texture. What I can do is I can actually move this layer and put the moons above it. So it will not affect anything that is above it. It will only affect from that layer down. Now in this case, of course, I wouldn't do that. I really want it to affect everything because it looks silly that it's only up there. But just so you know, watch the placement of that layer because that will affect exactly what is under or on top of it. So again, if it's above the layer, it will not change it. If it's below the layer, it will change it. So it's important to look at layer ordering with that. So again, we talked about renaming your layers. We talked about using groups. We talked about doing an overlay by looking up things like vintage and grunge backgrounds. Uh, we talked about placing objects and they, how they come in as smart objects and then how you would then right click and then you would rasterize that particular layer to make sure that you got some um, 
things that are editable on your document. Again, make sure as you're setting up your image size I talked about, make sure that you're setting up the appropriate size. This would be a very bad size for your finished piece to be printed nice and large. This one was downsized for something. You're going to be looking at an 18. Make sure this says inches. Make sure you're not in pixel dimension. 24 inches, 300 resolution, so that you have a nice large document for us to print up a nice quality piece. And that is it.